Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, uh, we are into the part two of fine tuning series. And in this particular video, we are going to discuss about Laura and Clora in-depth intuition. Already in the playlist of fine tuning, I've discussed about quantization and I hope you have seen the video early. Many people were requesting for Laura and Clora also. So let's uh, discuss uh, and uh, we will try to discuss the complete in-depth maths intuition. Uh, <clears throat> the best thing will be that guys, I'll try to explain this maths in depth intuition. Uh, I've already seen the research paper and there are a lot of complicated things that is probably there in the research paper, but I will try to teach you in such a way that at least you should be able to understand, you know, what exactly is Laura, what exactly is Clara. And then we'll also see one example, you know, how with the help of code, you will be able to do it. And trust me, these are some of the very important things in fine tuning because tomorrow you go in any interviews, you are going to get asked respect to this kind of questions that may be coming because at the end of the day, any generative AI projects specifically with LLM, right? LLM models. If you are working in the company, they will be giving you fine tuning task. So let me quickly share my screen and show it to you. So here already I have uploaded a video. Uh, part one where we have discussed about quantization uh, a good 32 minutes video everything you'll be able to understand it because here I've also used all the mathematical intuitions everything as possible as, as much as possible uh, to talk about the research paper so what does LoRa means LoRa basically means low rack adaptation of large language models uh, this is this amazing research paper and uh, probably you'll be seeing a lot of this kind of equations as you go ahead, there'll be different, different performance metrics. But as usual, I will do what I'm good at. I will try to break down all these things and probably explain you with respect to examples, with respect to code and many more things. So quickly, let's go ahead. <clears throat> so why LoRa and Clora is basically used? LoRa basically means low, low rank adaptation, lower order rank adaptation. It is specifically used in fine tuning of LLM models. Okay. So let's go ahead and discuss this. And I've created this amazing diagram over here. Initially, whenever, whenever you have a pre-trained LLM model, that basically means, uh, let's say that there is a model, something like GPT-4 or GPT-4 Turbo, right? And this model has been created by OpenAI. So, we basically say this model as the base model, okay, GPT-4 Turbo. And this model is trained with huge amount of data, right? So the data sources will be internet, it can be books, it can be multiple sources, right? At the end of the day, all these models, how you can measure them, they may be saying that, hey, uh, it supports 1.5 million tokens, you know, it has been trained with this many number of words, right? So many tokens of words. Now, what will happen is that all these models, you know, probably to predict the next word, it will have the context of all those tokens, and then it will be able to give you the response. So this all models are basically base model. And we also say this as a pre-trained model. Okay. Some of the examples, again, I'll be telling you GPT-4, GPT-4 Turbo, right? GPT-3, GPT-3.5, something. So all these models are specifically pre-trained models. Now, <clears throat> further, we can take this model and there are various ways of fine tuning it. Please make sure that you watch this video till the end. If you watch this video, you will understand everything that is actually required with respect to fine tuning. And there are multiple ways of fine tuning also. Now, let's say that I take this model, I do some amount of fine tuning, okay? And this fine tuning is done on all the weights of this specific model, right? So, some of the application that we may generate is like chat GPT, you know, we may generate like cloud, uh, cloudy chat GPT, right? Cloudy GPT itself, like the chatbot that we specifically use, some of the examples. Okay, so this one way of fine tuning is there where we train all our parameters. So here we specifically say full, full, full parameter training. Okay, so here you can see full parameter fine tuning. So here I'm going to write full parameter fine tuning. Now this is one way of fine tuning where we train our entire parameter based on our data that we have. Okay, and after training it, we can develop applications like chat GPT or any custom GPT that you specifically create. 
as we go ahead you can also take this models and perform domain specific fine tuning okay so one type of fine tuning is this the other tune other fine tuning technique that you can specifically use is called as domain specific fine tuning some of the example let's say that i'm fine tuning a a a a chatbot model you know which will be for finance it can be for sales it can be for different different domains itself right so here the main important word is domain so this fine tuning also we can perform okay so again why i'm saying all these things because there are various ways of fine tuning things right one more fine tuning we can basically divide by is something called as specific task fine tuning now in case of specific task fine tuning these are my different different task let's say this is task a b c d this task can be something related to q and a chat but this task can be something related to document q and a chat but different different applications so that is the reason why we are specifically saying over here as specific task okay specific task fine tuning now perfect now this is good you have seen all the different ways of fine tuning okay now let's talk about full parameter fine tuning again i'll repeat it this is my base model right now if you use it as an example as i said gpt4 turbo gpt3.5 you know gemini gemini 1.4 different different models can be there we can take this base model we can fine tune and create applications like chat gpt we can create other other application like stable diffusions you know not specifically to llm but lim we can actually do it then we can also further fine tune this based on domain specific fine tuning right based on different different domains like finance sales retail we can also take this model and do more specific task fine tuning like task a task b task d let's say i want to convert this into text to sql i want to have this as document q and a so i can further fine tune it based on specific task now let's talk about this full parameter fine tuning okay and what are the challenges with full parameter fine tuning and that is where see i'm building up the story later on i'll be explaining you where lora will be used <clears throat> now in full parameter fine tuning the major challenge is that we really need to update all the model weights let's say that i have i have a model which has somewhere around 175 billion parameters that basically means 175 billion weights Now in this particular case whenever i fine tune this model i need to update all the weights great now when i'm saying updating all the model weights and when we talk about this many number of parameters why it can be a challenge because there will be hardware resource constraint right so with respect to different different task if i really want to use this particular model that much ram i re really require for inferencing purpose that much gpu i really require right so for downstream task it becomes very difficult now what is downstream task downstream task some of the example is like model monitoring right model monitoring the other task can be like uh, model inferencing right model inferencing similarly the gpu constraint that we may have the ram constraint that we may have so we may face multiple challenges when we have this full parameter tuning full parameter fine tuning now in order to overcome this challenge we will specifically use lora and clora okay what exactly is lora as i said low order rank adaptation and clora is something it is also called as lora 2.0 so we'll discuss about both of them with respect to mathematical intuition and you'll get a complete idea what i'm actually trying to say now what does lora do okay now let's read the first point and this is very much important because in the research paper you will find this equation okay this equation now what exactly lora will do lora says that instead of updating all the weights in full parameter fine tuning right instead of updating all the weights it will not update them instead it will track the changes it will track the changes now what changes this is basically tracking it will track the changes of the new weights based on fine tuning okay this is very much important to understand so uh, based on the new weights how we are going to combine this weights with the pre trained weights okay so here you can see these are my pre trained weights from the base model 
like let's say that uh, this model is llama 2 now if you are performing fine tuning using lora then lora will track the new weights over here which will be of the same size okay so let's say that if this uh, weight is 3 cross 3 then the new weights when it is probably doing the forward and the backward propagation those new weights will be tracked in a separate matrix and then these two weights will be combined wherein we will get the fine tuned weights now this way what will happen is that this tracking will happen in a separate way but still you may be thinking krish here also we are updating all the weights itself right so here also the resource constraint will definitely happen yeah fine i'm talking about three cross three but what about uh, weights and parameters where they are 175 billion right 175 billion parameters or 7 billion parameters that time i'll be having a huge matrix right so at that scenario, you need to now understand how LoRa works. Because this weights, how it is getting tracked, it will just not get tracked in this 3 cross 3 matrix. Instead, all these weights that is getting tracked, there a simple mathematical equation will happen. Or I'll not say mathematical equation will happen, but there will be a technique that will happen which is called as matrix decomposition. That basically means the same 3 cross 3 matrix is saved it in a two smaller matrix. Now in this two smaller matrix, you can see this is nothing but 1 cross 3 and this is nothing but 3 cross 1, right? Sorry, this is 3 cross 1 and this is 1 cross 3, right? So this is 3 cross 1 and this is 1 cross 3. When we multiply both these weights, then I will be getting this weight only, right? So over here, if I consider I have some around nine weights four five six seven eight nine right you'll be able to see that i will be able to get all these nine weights from how many number of parameters just six parameters right because when we multiply this then you'll be able to see that i'll get all these nine parameters or nine weights that i have right so in short, what LoRa is doing is that it is performing this matrix decomposition where a big matrix and this matrix can be of any size is decomposed into two smaller matrix based on a parameter which is called as rank. How to calculate a rank of a matrix? You can definitely check out any YouTube channel. It is a simple algebraic equations based on transpose of a matrix, how we calculate the rank. But let's say that this matrix that I have, which is a 3 cross 1 over here, the rank of this particular matrix is 1, right? And if I use this two matrix, you can obviously see that the number of parameters that I'm storing over here is less when compared to this, right? Yes, there will be a loss in precision, but it is making sure that when we combine both this matrix, we'll be able to get the entire updated weights. Now just imagine, start thinking, guys. Let's say that if I have 7 billion parameters, now I'm trying to perform fine tuning on those parameters. So whenever I track those weights, this huge matrix will be decomposed into two smaller metrics. And when we are decomposing this, this matrix, this updated tracked weights matrix into two smaller metrics, obviously we'll be requiring less parameter to store all these values, right? And this way, your fine tuning becomes very much efficient. And this really solves the resource constraint, right? This is the most important thing, right? And so in any research paper that you go ahead, you'll be seeing this equation W0. This is my pre-trained weights plus the tracked changed weights is nothing but my pre-trained weights plus B multiplied by A. What is B? B is this, A is this. So when we multiply this, you'll be able to see that we are able to get the all the track change weights, right? And obviously this requires less parameter. If you are decomposing our bigger metrics into two smaller metrics, less parameters is required. Now what will happen if we keep on increasing the ranks? If we keep on increasing the ranks, this parameter will also keep on increasing, but it will always be less than this, right? If I have 7 billion parameters, if I try to decompose that into two, two matrices, two small red matrices with increasing rank, then also the parameters that will be required will be less. How I am saying this? Because uh, in the research paper also, they have tried with multiple trainable parameters. Now let's see over here. 
there are multiple techniques of fine tuning some of the techniques that uh, are there is something called as prefix embed prefix layer adapter adapter is one very famous thing that is probably used before lora right you can see as the rank is increasing the parameters also increases right initially the trainable parameters are 175 billion but when i use techniques like adapter right so initially it will have 7.5 oh, 7.1 million parameters with rank is equal to 1 but as I keep on increasing the rank, as I keep on increasing the rank, you'll be able to see that this parameter is also get increased. But you can see from 175 billion parameter, if I compare 7.1 million weights, the percentage is very less. Now, similarly in LoRa, because of that uh, metrics decomposition, you'll be able to see that as I keep on increasing my ranks. So these are my ranks with respect to Q, K, V, because in transfer, you have this three parameter Q, K, V. Then only all the matrix multiplication will happen with respect to these three parameters. And then we, as we keep on increasing the rank, here you can see 4, here you can see 8, here you can see 64. Then you'll be able to see initially we got 4.7 million parameters. Compare from 175 billion to 4.7 million. How this was possible? Because of the, because of the matrix decomposition. Because of the matrix decomposition. Right? And as we keep on increasing the rank, you'll be seeing that the parameters are increasing, right? The parameters are obviously increasing. But if I compare it with 175 billion parameter, this is very less, 9.4 million. If you just see the percentage, right? So here also, uh, when rank is equal to 8, 37.7 million, then rank is equal to 64, 301.9 million, right? Parameters are there. So still, it is making sure that the parameter is not that much, like like not not like 175 billion or not near to this. If I talk with respect to percentage, it is very, very less. I've also made another table, right? Just to show you, if I have different, different models, number of trainable parameter, number of trainable parameter, here you can see, I have one LLM model with 7 billion. If I use rank is equal to 1, then I will be having 167k parameters to fine tune, fine tune weights based on fine tune weights. Then, and this 167k parameter basically means what? This decomposed matrix that I have, right? Two matrix, that many number of parameters. So, in the first case, it is just nothing but 167k parameters that is available in this decomposed matrix, okay? When we combine them, then we will be able to get so how many? 7 billion parameters. If we combine both this matrix, then we'll be getting uh, 7 billion parameters, okay? Then similarly, you can see in 13 billion, then you have 2 to 8K parameters. In 70 billion, you have 5 to 9K parameters. In 180 billion, you have 8, 4, 9K parameters. So as you keep on increasing the weight, this parameters will keep on increasing, but it is not increasing with that huge amount, right? Even you can see when we keep the rank as 5, 12, right? So here you can see 86 million parameters is there when compared to billions, right? Uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, it came up with this LoRa technique uh, in one of the research paper and it has used rank is equal to 8, okay, to probably do the fine tuning and it has performed absolutely well. So most of the time we select this particular value, but at the end of the day, how to select this, right? It won't matter, you know, because the parameters are increasing by very less number over here as we go ahead. So usually you can select rank 1, 2, 8 while you're performing fine tuning. Now, there may be also scenario that when should we use very high rank? When to use high rank? When to use high rank? This answer, because in the interview they may ask you, if the model wants to learn complex things, complex things, then you can specifically use high rank, right? Let's say some of the model is not trained to probably uh, interact or probably uh, perform some of the behavior at that point of time those complex things can be handled when you are probably increasing the number of ranks okay so this can be a very simple question that may be asked in the interview but i hope you got a complete idea at the end of the day this is the equation that you'll be able to see in most of the research paper uh, what laura is doing is that nothing very simple all the track weights is decomposed into two smaller matrices with different different ranks it can be different different ranks when you're fine tuning the first thing is that you really need to set that rank okay if you set that rank like in this particular case if i probably see if i go ahead and calculate with all the mathematical stuff i will be able to get the rank is equal to one okay 
uh, for this also rank is equal to one right so similarly if you have rank two so one of the matrix can be something like this so decomposed matrix so this is based on rank two okay so if i probably combine this right so how many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve right if i multiply this i'll be getting a matrix uh, of much more parameters right but at the end of the day for in this particular case it is less number of parameters right so this is what lora is all about and because of this technique the fine tuning is done less the the weights the parameters becomes less so this is how the main resource constraint is done and uh, with respect to all the downstream task it becomes very much easy now one more thing that i really want to talk about is chlora okay chlora chlora basically means quantized quantized lora okay now if you have already learned from the first video what is quantized quantized basically means now in chlora case what will happen is that all these parameters that is probably stored in float float 16 bit okay we will try to convert this into 4 bit that's it okay once we do this you'll be able to see that we reduce the precision and then we try to reduce this values also by this you won't require much more memory so that is the reason we say quantized lora technique okay and the best thing about is this is that uh, clora also has one amazing algorithm which will be able to take care of both this part let's say if there is a float 16 bit i quantize it to 4 bit i can also convert this back into 16 bit okay so with respect to this explanation guys i have already spoken about many things over here lora and clora uh, just to show you one example so here is one example uh, i've already shown you this fine tuning using google gamma model let me talk about quantization quantization over here is basically done by bits and bytes config so here it says load in 4 bit true that basically means you are going to convert that entire model of 16 bit to 4 bit quantization technique that we are going to use is something called as nh4 and uh, all the further fine tuning is basically done in v float 16 okay uh, now there is also one more thing right see lora configuration here we are selecting the first rank value 8 and then target modules where we need to apply this particular decomposition and the task type casual lm once you do this and just execute everything you'll be able to see it right and that is how the entire quantization and the lora happens uh, you can obviously check this entire projects. I've already done it in my previous video. So you can check it out. You can go ahead and execute it. Now, I think everything makes sense with respect to the fine tuning. So yes, this was it for my side. I hope you like this particular video. I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you. One all. Take care. Bye-bye.